Thanks for the honor of, of speaking to you tonight. And um, I'm probably the least tech person in this entire room, but I work with the ocean, so I think that's fitting. Um, and when Doug asked me to talk, he said, can you tell us everything you know about the ocean in less than five minutes? <laughs> That'll be easy. So just to put a little context in some of the things that are going on tonight, I mean, we tend to think about the Earth as Earth, but most of you probably know it's 71% ocean, and whether it's how it affects our climate and weather, which we're discovering now in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, 97% uh, of the water on the planet is salty and is in the ocean. 99% of the habitat is in the ocean. Half of our oxygen is produced in the ocean. And if you don't think that's important, just skip every other breath for a while. <laughs> Commerce, energy, um, it's a place that has been both um, sort of underused but um, abused at the same time. And this, this new book called Coast in Crisis really focuses on a lot of those issues. Some people have said, and it may fit in this room tonight, 30% of the Earth is land and 70% is opportunity because we really haven't uh, done that much in a way to understand the ocean and its capabilities and its limits. And it's also been said, said that we know more about the backside of the moon than the bottom of the ocean, you know, where that came from, which is probably true. We spend a lot more money in space than we do in the ocean, but yet, we really depend on healthy oceans, and I think when we started, Doug said something about um, the reason Monterey Bay has become such a center is because it's still a pretty pristine environment. How many oceanographic institutions are there around the shores of San Francisco Bay? There's one. The water wasn't that pristine for years. Nobody swam in it, nobody fished in it, and that's changing, fortunately, for San Francisco Bay, but Monterey Bay has, has become um, an important um, area of focus for marine science and research and education, but there's still a lot of threats we face, and I'm not gonna go through this list because we tend to see them fairly often. Um, each of those tends to be global, so they're hard things to really deal with on a local level, yet we're doing what we can. But in many ways, I think Monterey Bay is this ideal natural laboratory for studying the ocean and, and a lot of those issues. Um, over the last, really beginning in 1890, when um, the Hopkins Marine Station was established, uh, and actually, the original slide didn't look like this. These were all lined up and everything looked really good. <laughs> Usually that happens when you go from a Mac to a PC, but tonight it's happening when you go to another Mac, so. But there's now some 20 odd um, institutions, whether they're research, whether education, technology, around Monterey Bay, um, something approaching 2,500 scientists and support staff on a budget annually of about $350 million based in the ocean, which is a surprise to many people. We think about maybe the aquarium, the Seymour Center, uh, Moss Landing Marine Labs, the university, uh, but there's a whole series of additional institutions that are both federal labs, um, state laboratories, um, places that you've probably never heard of, like Flu Fleet Numerical Meteorology Oceanography Center, which is where all the weather comes in and the sea conditions from across the world and goes out to the fleet and aircraft and the weather service and so forth. So we, I'm gonna say, arguably are probably the largest and most diverse global center for marine science uh, in the world. And, and if you're from someplace else, I'm sorry if I offended you. <laughs> we also, had at least when it was designated now um, the largest national marine sanctuary, and you look at sort of the subsea maps and you start to see this incredible canyon, uh, the diversity of habitats, circulation, water systems. There's just a lot of opportunities here. One of the unique ones, if you're at a normal oceanographic institution, you spend a day getting out into deep water, and here you can get into water 5,000 feet deep when you're still having your first cup of coffee. <laughs> if you haven't thrown up already. <laughs> and I just want to point out one institution because there's often this question about, you know, how come technology hasn't focused here? And that's why tonight is like an interesting sort of amalgamation of things. But Mabari, we tend to think of the aquarium, and many of you may know of Mabari, the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, which David Packard established after the aquarium got going because his real love was technology, and he wanted to try to figure out how to probe, sense, 
uh, really detect what was happening on the ocean in addition to the public uh, display that the aquarium does. And so they are, I will say, a global leader. They may be um, one of the top, if not the top institution of the world for developing new technology. Um, bottom rovers, autonomous underwater vehicles, semi-autonomous underwater vehicles, um, they have an incredible facility, an incredible group of engineers who have developing things that I don't think in many cases they ever had intended to commercialize, but I think they're a partner um, that we should work with uh, much more carefully. In terms of the economy, and this number is now 12 years old, but it probably hasn't changed a whole lot. California has the nation's largest coastal ocean economy. And what's interesting about it, because we think about a few things like maybe fisheries, um, fisheries in our total ocean economy is about 2%. Energy and minerals are about 2%. It's not offshore oil. The two big ones are transportation and shipping and tourism and recreation. And tourism and recreation require beaches, they require clean water, and the kind of things that we have around Monterey Bay. But that together makes up about 93% of our ocean economy, um, which is how we usually think about it. Um, I don't know how many people have ever seen this magazine. Wow. <laughs> it's like saying, have you seen God recently? <laughs> so this has been around for a long time, and I think initially it was really for the offshore oil industry. But what's happening is a lot of the things that have originally been developed for offshore oil, whether it's pipelines and video and submersibles, have now become a little broader in their application, some of the groups that are here tonight. And if you look in there, you'll see a lot of things you didn't maybe know existed. Um, a lot of different underwater vehicles, um, instrumentation, you know, side scan sonar. So this is becoming um, a bigger and bigger industry as we go further and further into the ocean. Um, in fact, a couple of these, and I was reminded that the fact that this company is now merged with another company, um, but it was an ad for Sea Engineering here in Santa Cruz, which did a lot of services and is now part of a large organization. Another one, Kinetics Lab, which does a lot of offshore work, um, surveying, permitting, monitoring. So we do have groups in Santa Cruz, but I think there's a lot more that could be done when I see the size of this group. And there's also things advertised in the most recent one about a technology workshop um, going on down in San Diego in a month. So people come together like this, but they're all marine tech people. There's also those places where they are now trying to make their place as the world center. Now, it's happening here. Now, who would have picked out Newfoundland? And how many people know where Newfoundland is? It's one of those high school geography questions. Well, it's somewhere by London or something. Um, so Newfoundland is one, Rhode Island is another. You know, they are wanting to be the center. Um, Massachusetts, Seattle, San Diego. Um, but I'm gonna say we have it all here. All it takes is a little fermentation and support, and I think we've got a great career and a, and a bright future ahead of us. Thanks very much.